Good afternoon, everyone. That music has me so hyped. Thank you for carving out time in your day and joining our Latinos of, of Impact webinar. Today, we will be talking about DEI and the company's role in driving equity. My name is Marco Leanos, and it's my pleasure to be your host for our session. I, I'm honored uh, to be here uh, with, and uh, just wanted to share a little bit about me. I'm IBM co-founder and Hispanic BRG leader in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I, I co-lead IBM's partnership with We Are All Human. And, and in my day job, uh, I work under the IBM Consulting Business Unit as a talent transformation senior IT consultant and deliver uh, innovative solutions to my DOD customers. Next, I'll introduce you to our esteemed panelists and we'll dive right into our discussion. Uh, first, from IBM, uh, we have Mike Pereira, who is currently the general manager of IBM Technology Lifecycle Services. In this global role, Mike is charged with transforming and going IBM's traditional support business in line with IBM's overall hybrid cloud strategy and is responsible for the overall profit and loss of the division, including strategy, sales, and delivery across more than 170 countries. Prior to this role, most recently, he served as Vice President of IBM Z Software Sales and leading IBM's first major Z Software pricing transformation in 20 years. In addition to serving IBM's perf uh, performance team of the top 50 IBM executives leading the company's return to growth, I think is chair of IBM's Hispanic Leadership Council, a business resource group focused on advancing the organization's Hispanic community. Outside of IBM, Mike serves on the board of directors of Raleigh's Wake Ed Partnership, a nonprofit which seeks to transform local schools through public and private partnerships, and most recently named to 2022 class of the high tech top 100 most influential Hispanic leaders in technology. Uh, next, we have uh, our our uh, our. Our panelist, Claudia Romo Edelman, she is the founder of the We Are All Human Foundation, a New York-based nonprofit foundation dedicated to advancing the agenda of diversity, inclusion, and equity through content creation, community building, and mobilization of the private sector. Claudia is a social entrepreneur, an advocate, and catalyst for change. A frequent public speaker and media contributor. Claudia is focused on unifying the U.S. Hispanic community and promoting sustainability and purpose-driven activities. And, and finally, uh, Dr. Cortez, uh, Dr. Angelica Cortez is the Senior Vice President of Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, also known as JEDI at the Pacific Clinics, the largest uh, nonprofit behavior, behavioral agency in California. In this role, she is responsible for advancing their racial equity and justice agenda, which includes developing employee retention programs, shaping internal and external policies, and implementing change efforts across the organization. Prior, Dr. Cortez was the vice president of racial justice and equity at the Silicon Valley Leadership Group after directing their investor relations strategies for five years. Her background spans public policy and advocacy and entrepreneurship, having worked for policymakers and trade associations while successfully founding numerous organizations, including Lead Filipino and Bad Block Network. She also has received various awards, including uh, the 2021 Woman of Influence, Silicon Valley Business uh, Journal's uh, 40 Under 40, 2018 Outreach Champion Award from the Santa Clara County Commission, on the status of women in Asian American recovery services, sister to sister legacy award. And she also holds a doctorate from the University of Southern California. So uh, with, with all that said, and I'm, I'm very privileged to, uh, have to, to, to kick off this discussion and we'll just dive in, dive into uh, defining DEI and why is this conversation important and you know, how, how is DEI defined by you or personally or by your organization? And I'll, I'll kind of lead that question off to uh, Dr. Cortez uh, to kick us off here. Well, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am joining you all from San Jose. Thank you to Marco and the team for inviting me in Pacific Clinics uh, for this wonderful opportunity. And, and hello to Claudia and Mike. So happy to share this virtual stage with, with each of you. I must first say that I am a Filiprima, so I am um, 
Joining you all is a member of the Asian American Pacific Islander community, but building cross-racially uh, solidarity and seeking to understand each other's experiences is a priority of mine, both personally and professionally. So the definition of diversity, equity, and inclusion, for me, I approach this from multiple vantage points. So what you will get from me is, is definitely talking about these issues in a way of operationalizing them, but also evaluating and implementing. And I like to also elevate for everyone the, the component of racial equity and how that is unfolding in modern organizations as well. So for me, I define DEI as many things that are concrete representation, visibility, access, the allocation of budgetary and material resources to employees, to managers, the role of leadership in helping to set that agenda and to advance that work in a way that is concrete and palpable and felt across organizations. Depending on if you are small, medium, or large, and in which sector you work in, I'm joining you all today from the healthcare sector. As Marco mentioned, the largest um, nonprofit and behavioral health agency in the state of California. We are 150 years old. The way that I talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion as it relates to our employee experiences and the clients that we serve in schools, in hospitals, in community based settings might look a little bit different, but there are just general principles around, again, shifting power, access, representation, visibility, and how you create pathways for voices to be heard that we know have historically been disenfranchised and pushed to the margins. We know there are gendered components. We cannot forget the element of intersectionality and how that plays into how decisions are made and who the power brokers are. So for me, that's just my, my short take on DEI. Back to you, Marco. Thank you, Dr. Cortez. And that's really in line with a lot of the partnership um, pillars or framework that our partnership does with We Are All Human. And uh, that, that's a good lead into um, uh, uh, Claudia. Claudia, if you could please uh, also with, with that same background of question of, of, of how do we define DEI for We Are All Human and our partnership, I, I think it's a great opportunity to share that. Yes, and, and again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me with such uh, honorable company, uh, Dr. Cortez, Mike, Marco, thank you so much. Diversity and inclusion is here to stay. The way that sustainability was for 20 years, and if you're not now like fully on purpose and sustainability, you're probably out of business. The same will happen with diversity and inclusion. And it is really important for us to start identifying what does that mean. We're all human. is set up to remind people just of that that we are all human, that we're all part of the same human family. So it's not so much focused on diversity because we just have to look around and see how diverse we are. It's all about like thinking of ways in which you can increase the level of inclusivity so that you can achieve equity and through that progress. So I have a couple of slides, if you permit, Marco, that, you know, like pretty much guide what uh, we do at the World Human Foundation when it comes to related to the Hispanic community. And we really believe that this is our time and there were about to come through a breakthrough, that there's something that just happened and started happening with a number of things that you're about to really um, allow the Latino community to break through and see the light. And it is not without saying that it is very important to like be evidence-based data about how important and critical are Latinos to America, to corporate America. And just if you permit for a couple of seconds, uh, just to level set and so that you don't think that I'm just a super proud Latina, which I am, but this is about the data uh, driving us to, to understand how critical Latinos are. We are the people. We're 19% of the population, 62 million people today, 30% of the population tomorrow by 2050 will be one in every three uh, Americans will be Latino. So hello, hello, hola. And not only were the many, were the youngest. And Dr. Cortez probably has seen that in the healthcare system where you have, you know, like, like the most, uh, the, the, the youngest cohort in America is Latina. We're 28 years old average. That's 10 years younger than the rest of the population. And our mode, meaning our most common age, the most common age of 62 million Latinos today is 11 years old. 
the most common age of non-Latinos is 58 years old. So regardless in what sector you are, regardless in what company you are, you're looking at four decades of pure growth of the, the future consumer, the future employee, the future, um, you know, like patient, the future doctor. So we are the growth and we're not only the people, we're also the economic power. Um, the size of the Latino economy is $2.7 trillion. Just to put that into perspective, it would be a standalone economy economy will be the eighth largest country in the world. That means we produce 12% of the GDP of the country. And that GDP, that GDP grows 7% faster than China. So let alone America, if you start looking at the economies of the world and you're looking at like, what are the fastest growing economies in the planet? You have China, India, and then the Latino community. So we are the economy, we are the people, and we are the growth. So because of our purchasing power is so high, $1.9 trillion, we're vital for the growth of any sector, whether you're in tech or you're in the auto industry, where 68% of your growth, video gaming, 68% of your growth. And we represent the suppliers and entrepreneurs of the future because one in every five Americans are uh, one in every five entrepreneurs are a Latino entrepreneur. And that goes to our Latinas as well, because Latinas create six times faster than any other group in America, small businesses making us the job creator number one in the country. That's why when Dr. Cortez says she's a, uh, she's a prima, uh, Philip Prima, I absolutely believe that that's what's gonna get us going. Those intersectionality, those, uh, those agreements in those groups that we are. Just to finalize from the data, uh, we are critical not only to the country, but also to the economy because we are the workforce growth. So Marco, when you're asking what is diversity and inclusion, ladies and gentlemen, diversity and inclusion in America looks like 40% of the workforce growth will be from Latinos. So you really need to make a huge effort to understand the Latino employee, the Latino supplier, because we're 40% of your growth. And if every minute a Latino turns 18, that means that you really need to have a deep understanding of how to make inclusive environment for Latinos in your company so that you can attract the, 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 the future employee. And that will continue being, this is not this decade. As you can see, over uh, over the next decades in America, Hispanic progress is American progress. And we're driving the, the population growth and we're driving the economical growth. And yet we have barriers that we have to overcome, not only the systemic barriers about education and health, uh, but also the barriers that are in ourselves to adhere in corporations to change. One of them, the most important ones, is that Latinos do not know of their own contributions to the country. We don't know how powerful we are and therefore we feel weak. We don't know how much we contribute and therefore we don't think that we can speak up. And as Dr. Cortez was saying, it is very important to bring those voices that are not heard. But if you don't feel that you have a voice, it's very hard. So companies have an incredible opportunity to educate, to illuminate not only your entire executive leadership so that they can see where the opportunity is, but also your Latinos. Mm -hmm. Number two is that Latinos, 76% of Hispanics cannot be themselves at the workforce. And that really was the point of bringing forward one of the initiatives that we're gonna be discussing today, which is the Hispanic promise, making a promise for Hispanics to be able to feel that they can be themselves. And the last barrier that I'd like to share with you is that 90% of Latinos identify as Latinos, Latinx, Hispanics, whatever you wanna call us, as long as you pay as well, you can use whatever you want that uh, that group of Hispanics, um, we identify as Hispanics, but we do not act as a community. So we're very fragmented. But there's one thing that really unifies us all, if you look at all data, which is that Latinos really is not about language, it's not about country of origin. What really unifies us all is our desire to progress, to move forward, to achieve the American dream. And the point here, ladies and gentlemen, and the reason why this is so important for diversity and inclusion is that the higher you go, the lonelier it gets. The higher you go in the ladder, the more you're gonna feel the only one. So it's of self-interest for Latinos to support each other and to open the door for each other.
And that is why the partnership with IBM has been so instrumental and incredible for us as a world human, because you are incredible leaders, not only leaders in the space, you're thoughtful, you're committed, you're strategic. You were the first founding partner of the World Human Foundation in 2020. We started doing panels when COVID happened. We started doing webinars to educate the community. We had a jam session, bringing the intelligence of more than 1,000 Latino leaders forward so that we understand how do we want to work in a corporation? What makes it important for us to be in a place? What do we define inclusive? Then we started actually looking at the opportunities to increase the pipeline through making P-Tech that you generously provided to the community in Spanish to make sure that there's all the kids have access to P-Tech training. We started writing papers about leadership and this is together as a company, you are putting your money where your mouth is. And the, we brought, you know, like the first ever, we're opening doors together, bringing the first Latino cohort delegation to Davos, to the World Economic Forum, doing these kind of series of webinars where we're bringing Latinos of impact and leadership and ending with, I think, that the most important work that I've done in the 25 years of my career, which is bringing forward a framework that can really be historic in actually understanding what are the goals and what are the ways to measure the impact of diversity and inclusion framework, something that we call the Hispanic Promise 2.0. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Claudia and Dr. Cortez. I don't know about whoever's listening out there, but this data is inspiring, but also identifies challenges that we, you know, we, we, can, we can address. Uh, and we, uh, and I, I, I believe the leaders here that we have will, will, will speak on those, on those uh, act calls to action. Um, with uh, w with that same theme or anything you want to elaborate on, Mike, uh, with with what Claudia has re regarding DEI and some of the the data and, and conversation that we've gotten so far. Yeah. Well, first, it, it's always terrible to to follow Claudia. Uh, so <laughs> see, hopefully, we can flip the order around as we go forward. But uh, in, in all seriousness, you know, for us we do work in more than 170 countries around the world and every single one of those has a different definition of diversity so actually building on what dr cortez said as well as claudia you know, our goal ultimately is to provide a culture of inclusivity and belonging for all ibmers so that 76 percent of hispanics that can't find themselves right we want that to be zero ultimately inside of ibm so it's about creating spaces and opportunities for everyone to show up as their authentic self whether you're black or asian or hispanic or female neurodiverse lgbtq plus veteran or or anything else so we think about dei across four strategic pillars one is accountability and that's accountability for our leaders and achieving goals and owning actions and making progress again back to claudia's point progress Number two is advocacy. So increasing opportunities through investment, through partnerships, like with We Are All Human, through legislation. Third is allyship that creates a psychologically safe and supportive workplace where IBMers can bring their authentic self. And then fourth is the employee experience. So are we empowering every IBMer to exemplify the behaviors that create this culture of conscious inclusion and ultimately provide a space where they can innovate and, and thrive and progress. No, I think, thank you, Mike. And, and working with you and the exec and the Hispanic executive council, really, it, it, you, you have to be targeted and under, and understand what what the data is identifying as gaps or what what challenges or what you know where, where to start uh you know uh or where to start a year to really put that energy towards meeting some of the dei goals or the programs which kind of leads into our, our our next area of how do we identify those biggest challenges and you know, what are those biggest challenges um that Dr. Cortez, I'll start with you with a, lo a lot of great information that you, you, Mike, and 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 Claudia have shared. Kind of, if we can lean into your experience on some of the biggest challenges that you've seen uh, and, and how to how to how, how to overcome them, um, as far as some of the information you can provide. Did you call on me, Marco? 
Yeah, Dr. Cortez, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, no, thank you for the question. I think it's one that if you were to, to speak with advocates and professionals and just supporters in this field of work, this is that perennial question of how are we identifying the challenges? How are we engaging our people in these processes? Is it a survey? Is it a poll? We know that there is uh, an, an inordinate amount of survey fatigue, at least in our sector, especially as we provide telehealth. Um, again, for those that are just joining, I am coming to you all, not from IBM, but as a, as a supporter of, of the mission of both the We Are All Human Foundation as well as IBM, but I'm coming to you all from the mental health and behavioral health sector. So as we talk about wellness and well-being and whole person care, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and racial equity, and how we implement that is entirely what we are consumed by. So in terms of identifying the challenges, I joined Pacific Clinics about a year ago. Prior to that, I was with another organization. I think there are some basic steps that I would advise that, again, this is depending on where you are in your lifespan, in terms of your organizational investment and your commitment to advancing DEI or racial equity. And I also want to start real quick with just some definitions around how the agency I'm rep representing today, Pacific Clinics, talks about DEI and racial equity. You need both. DEI, as we know, was an outgrowth in United States history of the civil rights movement. Xerox was actually the first company to establish the National Black Employee Caucus to create a space of belonging and inclusion. So in in the aftermath of the civil rights movement, and as we saw activist histories and these movements um, around inclusion and belonging in the workspace, and these, these pleas and these movements to create diversity and representation across all leadership ranks, that was the focus in terms of, can I look and see someone who looks like me that is of my culture? Do we have culturally responsive programming within this organization? private sector, public agencies, they all have different, you know, experiences in this history around it, but there were legislative influences, obviously, that kind of pushed this imperative. When we talk about racial equity, we're talking about becoming anti-racist organizations. We're talking about what that work means in that process of becoming an anti-racist organization and pulling apart policies that we know have been onerous, programs and practices that we know have created disparities and outcomes that we see across all social determinants of health, healthcare, housing, transportation, environment, zip code, educational attainment, home ownership. So when we're talking about these issues of racial equity and, and, and justice, for me, I have to talk about it around generational wealth. How are we teaching our people financial literacy? How are we bringing them into civic innovation conversations? How are we bringing them this comprehensive view of what it means to be in a system that wasn't historically designed for you? So to get back to your question, <laughs> how to identify challenges, you have to go right to your people. So for me, I'm really big. I come to this work with a community organizer background. It's actually still what I do. I work a million jobs. So for me, I have to go right to the people, our direct service staff. These are family specialists. These are clinicians. These are peer facilitators, peer partners that have lived experiences. Black, indigenous, people of color, BIPOC communities. What do you seek? What do you need? How can we enrich you? How can we pour into you? Recognizing that people are our number one like finite resource. If we want to be strategic, if we want to expand, if we want to advance the, the mission, there is a business side of the mission, but there's also the people side of the mission that is tantamount to all of our goals. And one cannot be placed ahead of the other. So for me to identify the challenges, I went right to the people. My first 90 days in this job, I had over 100 one-on-one -on -one meetings with folks of all levels within the organization. I have strong beliefs about hierarchy, which we don't need to go into today, but everyone, everyone's experience is valid. Everyone needs to be heard, whether or not it's anonymous or it's right on the other line with me. And there were a bunch of other movements that were happening prior to my arrival, but what it resulted in was a roadmap. A roadmap that focused on five key areas. Real quick, I don't want to eat up all the time. These are just some comprehensive topics to hit in one to two minutes. My apologies, everyone. But we're looking at how do we diversify um, leadership and representation across all levels. These are not novel things. We know that these are themes that we see across every sector and industry. 
wanting to see more women, wanting to see more folks of color, uh, transparency around promotional pathways, for us learning and training for our clinicians and continuing education for our psychologists, our psychiatrists, our nurses. So delivering training that is culturally responsive and relevant to the demographics we're serving in a mental behavioral health context. Um, policies, practices, and procedures, our board diversity policy, how are we selecting board members in an equitable way that accounts for all the different measurements of diversity to make our org stronger? How are we, um, also to, to Mike's point earlier, public policy and advocacy, how are we bringing policymakers in to understand our sector, to advocate for dignified you know, cost of living adjustments, being in the highest cost region in the world, if not the country as well? So there are just a lot of questions to be asked. It's a continuous process. You don't identify them and stick to that plan for 10 years. It should be fluid. And you should always be going back and engaging in questioning. Thank you. Wow, that, uh, Dr. Cortez, what you just mentioned, it's, it's, it resonates with, 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 with all, when you, when you mentioned just why, the, the why and the cultural uh, uh, identity uh, concerns, you know, why, why things are being, um, you know, how, how do you identify, and then the civil movement years ago, it also resonates the more recent during COVID and during the, the more recent uh, civil uh, unjust you know, injustices that has also accelerated, I believe, a lot of these partnerships and a lot of intersectionality that I, I feel is why we should continue, you know, uh, passing that torch to folks, uh, you know, when I consider all of all three of you panelists force multipliers uh, as far as workforce multipliers, DEI, uh, justice warriors, uh, it just, just amazing what you said. So a, a lot to unpack there. I do, I, just for the sake of time, Claudia, I, I, wanna, I wanna bring up uh, some of the partnership that we've done together with you and Mike, if you wanna bring up a, a little bit of that information, and then we'll kind of dive into, you know, what programs, initiatives does the, do the panelists recommend and kind of dive into that section next? Um, thanks. Look, I, I cannot, I cannot overemphasize, and for whomever is actually watching, you, if you work for IBM, be very proud. I work with 300 companies, and it's very, very um, rare to see the level of commitment, the level of uh, strategy, the level of uh, engagement, the genuine commitment that you have. So you are, you know, like we are, I'm very lucky to be partnering with IBM, you know, like from Alan, Mike, uh, 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 Marco, uh, Catherine, Jesus, Maria, all of you guys are truly committed to what you're doing, have the means to do it and can scale it up. And that is, I think that if you were asking what is a challenge, but also what is a program that can solve it, I don't think that I have seen an, a single company that comes and says like, no, no, I do want to be racist. And, you know, like I don't want to do diversity and inclusion. No one wants to do it. Everybody got it. Everybody got the memo. People are watching. They need, they are expecting action. The question is the how. And for me, three years ago, the problem was that there was you know, like I started looking at what tools are available for corporations to actually engage with Latinos and actually say, how do I, like, how do I, like what Dr. Cortez said, like she went for 100 people. How do you actually like engage in creating a more inclusive environment for Latinos? What are the instruments that they are? And to my surprise, there were like, 100 instruments for women, uh, 20 corporate pledges, you know, like 54 African American, 20 pledges for cat shelter and dogs, and I mean, like everything. And there was not a single instrument for Latinos. So we created the Hispanic Promise, a simple, a simple corporate pledge to hire, promote, retain, and celebrate Latinos in the workplace to make a promise to Latinos, as simple as that. I promise that I will hire you, that I will train you, that I will retain you. We got more than 300 companies right now that are part of the Hispanic Promise because I think that's a challenge and that's also the solution. We're fragmented and we needed a tool that is simple because people want to change. We just might need to make it, you know, like the complexity, we have to simplify it so that people are there. The problem is that, no, it's not a problem. The great news is that we have so many people inspired, not only companies, not only 
probably 300 companies, but also every single Latin organization that is working with corporate America is part of the same of the same system of the Hispanic Promise. And what is fantastic that we're doing with uh, with IBM is moving that forward, putting that as a Hispanic Promise 2.0 if we want adding the complexity that we need, adding the pillars that we need in conjunction, having the Latin organizations around the table with corporations, you organize that for us in a historic moment of having the Latin organizations that never sat together with the corporate America that never sat together and sit down until we agreed what are the pillars that we're going to have, what are the what is the framework that we're going to have, what are the indicators to make sure that we know that we're working towards the progress to make sure that our corporations are inclusive. And this is pretty much, you know, like very inspired by the sustainable development goals that have goals and indicators and reporting mechanisms and best practices so that everybody can have a master plan for the best, uh, for the for the better of the future on the planet. We have that opportunity right now of having a framework that allows for corporations and individuals to say, these are the these are the big hairy goals that we want. We we want to actually make sure that we give everybody the opportunity not only to be inspired but to take action. And this piece of work, it will actually take a little bit more time for us to finish it. But this would be really inspiring and really an actionable tool for corporations, but also an inspiration for other communities, ideally, that can be part, uh, that can be taking something like the Sustainable for Development Goals, but for diversity and inclusion. So very excited about the partnership and very, very excited to invite everyone that wants to actually make a promise to Latinos to be part of the Hispanic Promise and the Promise, the, the Hispanic Promise 2.0. Thank you, uh, thank you, Claudia. And if you notice, there's there's overlap to uh, what Dr. Cortez had mentioned and and, and identifying you know the, the, you know making sure that organization has diversity leadership, wanting to see more women um, in, in different positions, transparency of promotion, cultural responsiveness, uh, you know, charging at policies, practice program. What Dr. Cortez said, and if you notice, there's there's intersectionality here with this framework that quite frankly can be applied to any community. So I, I love this visual and I love what Dr. Cortez had said. Um, I, I think we can uh, go, go to our more, um, our, our section of more, now that we kind of understand and layered, you know, some of the identifying DEI goals and, and some of the uh, program frameworks, what, what, what can organizations do uh, you know, for employees to to support a DEI mission or or leaders within an organization. In other words, you know, calls to action, right? Uh, what what you know from viewers from all ranges, whether they're an organizational leader, an employee, uh, middle management, regardless. What what are some calls to action? And and we can uh, continue uh, continue with you, Claudia, on uh, if you can kick us off there and some some takeaways to share. Um, thanks. I mean, like these are quite basic. I think that the four that Mike mentioned for me are exceptional. And as a fact, if you don't mind, Mike, if you can talk about the, the progress, uh, the program that we're doing together for the Hispanic Promise 2.0, because I think that um, it would be uh, it would be great to hear from the corporate perspective how is this useful for you as a framework uh, but for me everybody has a role to play there is no like yeah that goes to hr or that's actually you know like someone else that is the the, the you know like the in charge of diversity and inclusion Diver like making an inclusive environment is a job for everybody and everybody can make a difference and i'm going to speak to the latinos that, that are you know like that are around the table be energized the data is with you become a activist. We have to do a campaign of education for everybody. If we want to change the distorted mirror that we have, we have to actually get the right mirror. So be educated, make an effort to actually get the data about the Latino power and be empowered. Drink the Kool-Aid about the power of Latinos. Number two, let's get organized. We're absolutely fragmented. We're not very organized and we're not, you know, like very intentional. We think, you know, we have cultural barriers, social barriers, some personal voices that come across. We have to be intentional about creating networks of support. If you don't have a mentor, get a mentor. If you're not mentoring someone, mentor someone. If your company doesn't have sponsors, go and look for ways to do that and make sure that you bring 
allies with you in this process to make sure that they understand that we don't bark, we don't bite, we just work hard. And that's not the only way to advance. And so that you can have an ecosystem of support that when you get to a place, you share the access code, you open the door for someone else, because that's the only way in which we will all continue doing what we're doing. So take someone with you and open the door for you. And the last piece for me is to get mobilized. It's great to talk, it's so much better to act. And this is a time for action. That's why I want Mike to talk about the Hispanic Promise 2.0. It's time to invest invest in actually programs like PTEC to make sure that you have a robust pipeline, invest in actually making sure that there's more STEM into the Latino community, invest in the development of our, of our community so that we can have senior positions. When you get to a place where you're like a Mike Pereira that is like such an inspiring leader, make sure that you show you know, showcase him so that if you can be it, you, if you can see it, you can be it. Because we all need to actually take action because we are really very close to breaking through and be the last generation of Latinos that is not seen, not heard, and not valued. Thank you, Claudia. Um, uh, actually, we're gonna, Mike, if, if, you, if you can elaborate on the Hispanic promise, uh, you really took charge with the executive council and the partnership uh, with kind of share, you know, leading us to a vision of what that looks like, not just for IBM and, and, and uh, and, and and we're all human, but the vision really of the fr the framework uh, to have as many big organizations as possible, uh, you know, come alive and 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 join join this mission. Uh, if you can you can kind of share your vision and, and and some traction going on with the with the audience. Sure. So I'm, I'm again in the unenviable position of following Claudia. I'm, I'm taking notes here, Marco. We'll have to chat later on about the order of operation, but. Um, so let me actually take this chart and work backwards. So I'll start with get mobilized and start with what we've been doing uh, together with we are are all human as well as a number of other partners uh, and Fortune 100 companies around the world as well as a bunch of nonprofits. So what we've done is we've taken the original Hispanic Promise framework and we've tried to put some teeth into it. So said differently we've tried to add metrics, measurable things that we can hold companies accountable for. So now it's not just about signing the promise and what you may or may not ever actually take action on, but it's you sign the promise and then we measure against the promise. And those companies who are making progress and are contributing and are leading will get more recognition. And as a result, be more recognized as a leader and hopefully, as a result, inspire others to follow them. So the likes of IBM, uh, the likes of Nike, the likes of Procter & Gamble, uh, these are the types of companies that have come together working towards this Hispanic Promise 2.0. And uh, we are now have it to a point where we've got a, a good straw man. Uh, now we're refining it and we'll be launching it uh, in short order in the, in the coming future. I, I think it's also important uh, note around getting mobilized it's not just around the partnerships which is super important like we just talked about to have an impact but it's also about allyship and how do you leverage others that may not look like you or sound like you or come from the same background in order to help progress the overall initiative from there let me take the next step up get organized so depending on the size of the company it's really about dividing and conquering. And for us, we've got four squads and then a bunch of sub squads or work streams underneath them that not so coincidentally align to some of the work streams you saw in the Hispanic, Hispanic Promise framework. So we have one around talent retention, we have another around external eminence and public policy, we have another one around awareness. And then the fourth one that we realized afterwards and we added on is around communication because you know the some of the statistics that claudia showed before around people who are aware or not aware as a case may be we had the exact same phenomenon inside of ibm about people who are just not aware of the programs that we have or not aware about the progress that we're making not aware about how they can become part of something bigger and help move us forward and progress so each of these squads has a number of activities that they're driving and, and that we measure. 
Um, and then, you know, ultimately, we take that high level organization and drive it down into and through our business resource groups. And my shirt here, La Familia, is, is our brand, if you will, of these enterprise resource groups or business resource groups, which for us is 13 individual groups by geography spread across the US where we have a significant employee population. And this is our smaller community, the community within the community, so to speak. So Claudia mentioned before about how Hispanics are not very well organized across communities. Well, this is our attempt at pulling together smaller communities that ultimately add up to the much bigger community. And what we found is the people who participate are more engaged. So our familia leaders are five points more engaged. Our members are three points more engaged. Our council executives are four points more engaged. And it really comes down to just being transparent with our employees and with our investors, as well as with our community. Um, lastly, it, it, on Get Energized, it's got to start at the top. And for us, we're blessed to have a phenomenal CEO who not just walks the walk, but talks the talk. Uh, that means that we invest in having uh, diversity and inclusion chief diversity officer. That means that we've got investments around programs specific for Hispanics. Uh, that means that we're able to do things like this, do events that help progress us forward. And, and ultimately, it means that all of our executives across IBM are measured on whether we move the needle on DEI or not. Uh, so it's money in, in our pockets, which is a great way to motivate folks to go do the right thing if they're not bound to do it on their own. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I absolutely. It, an, an engaged uh, employee community uh, with with those platforms, uh, creating structure around it, uh, definitely a, a, a strong frameworks that within IBM I, I've seen being built, um, and and now getting that amplification across different companies, and now uh, that also partners with with uh, We're All Human Partners and Dr. Cortez, um, similar question to you. I know you have a different lens uh, uh, with, with your response, but I, I would, we would love to get your takeaway on, you know, what, 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 what would be your call to action uh, from, from an organizational standpoint or personal standpoint um, to kind of elaborate on what's been, been discussed so far? Absolutely. And I just want to say, Mike, can I put in a request to order one of those t-shirts? I definitely need to rock one. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what this floral arrangement is over here, but I want one of those. You got it. It's in the mail. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, <clears throat> this question can be um, examined from a number of ways, but if I were to respond first from the perspective of the individual, right, to Claudia's point, the individual that personal and professional enrichment and that development. I think it starts with participating in fora, forums like today. This is definitely you making a concerted effort around your own personal interests, whether or not those tie back into the role that you hold within your organization. That can be you know, additional skills development it can be getting involved in the numerous initiatives that Mike laid out that IBM, um, you know, fosters annually and has made a, a decades long commitment to. So that can be, be these employee resource groups. We know that these are spaces, again, of inclusion and belonging. This is where you can share resources. It could be a space to process and to talk about issues in the workplace, whether or not those are cultural, social, economic, or a place to digest what's happening in this world. We know that you do not check your personality and you should not when we talk about showing up in your truth and being accepted for who you are. I'll tell all of you, I am covered in tattoos. I find that to be my birthright. It is a sacred practice of my indigenous roots. And so I want to show up in that way, being in an organization or, or a corporation that celebrates my authentic self, that is important today, especially when we talk about the, the movements of, of how generational attitudes are changing. We know that we are in remote environments. Many of us were 
you know, had remote and dispersed workforces far before some of us. I worked in orgs that were like, what is remote work? So, and <laughs> so we're definitely all in, all in this landscape in a, in, on a spectrum of reality together, but how we interpret that and how we make meaning is going to depend on your personal capacity. So I think finding a, a mentor and a sponsor, you need to do that genuinely. I don't think that's something that happens over T once and, and then you're like, can you be my mentor? You definitely have to engage in these informal networks. You have to, to come to these uh, discussions, whether or not it's a celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. I hope you all partake in what IBM is planning for Hispanic Heritage Month, but meet other folks, understand other experiences, and think about how you can develop your skills and what that means in terms of public speaking. Is it facilitation? Is it project management? Life is a continuous journey, as we know, and there is an ongoing learning component that I don't think we praise enough. So I, I, I wouldn't expect anyone to come into a room and say, I profess to have all the answers. So I really want to emphasize that individual journey, but I also want to bring in the collective component. You know, um, Mike and Claudia both talked about um, the need to organize and marshal our community around priority items or a common agenda. Believe you me, this is a conversation that's dominant in the Asian American Pacific Islander community. We are not a monolith, nor should we espouse to be, but are there issues that we know impact our community in particular that we can band around and we can form awareness campaigns and educate others and call people in? We talk a lot about how to engage our seniors. I mean, there are linguistic thresholds that are concerns in the Asian Pacific Islander community. Not all seniors are gonna roll in and speak English with us as we know. And I think that's something that is probably a common, especially with our aging population. Um, but I think about that collective piece as well. So yes, you're going to these employee resource group meetings for your own personal enrichment and fulfillment, but there is a collective piece around that. And the last thing I wanna say is on this topic of civics, public policy and legislation has been brought up. These, these you know, um, action verbs around mobilizing, organizing, networks, factivism, activism, scholar activism, that really suggests that this idea of if you want to be an advocate and you want to make an impact in any realm that you are in, whether or not that's diversity, whether or not that's racial equity, whatever that means to you, you make that difference. You do that in a collective way. You do that through coalitions. And part of understanding racial equity and social justice on a macro level, because we are a globalized society, is that you're investing in your own understanding around racial equity and racial justice change by knowing what's going on across the country and across this world. So I shared some links with the team, just some national organizations, local groups that I work with personally that I would love to shout out here. We have the Latino Corporate Directors Association. They are doing amazing work to uplift uh, emerging and seasoned um, Latina X and O professionals to get onto boards. They have a, a number of leadership development programs. I have my girls at the, the Latina Coalition of Silicon Valley. You do not need to be based in the geography of Silicon Valley, but they brought nearly all of their programs virtual. Please check them out as well. And the last I'll say is out leadership. We can't forget about the intersections. You know, Mike talked about allyship, our uh, queer LGBTQIA plus communities, their experiences. We know what's happening in this country right now around attacking and undoing civil rights. So we also need to bring those conversations into these workplaces as we position ourselves for what the future could bring. Thank you. Dr. Cortez, uh, just wow. I, all three of you have brought a lot of different flavor with that. There's a lot of complexity, a lot of layers, but at the same time, at the end of the day, we all want to move forward with that coalition, that, that collectiveness. You three are amazing listeners. So it's given that vulnerability, building that trust, and, and also reciprocating with listening when, you, when, when, when you're having that dialogue. And, and all three of you are amazing at that. Um, we, we do have time for one more question, and then we're going to go ahead and close. So um, if, you're not in a, if, if, if you're not in a position to make these big decisions that, um, that the leader, the panelists are, are you know, in that, that, that leadership position, but you still want to make a difference, how, how, do, you, how do you start? You know, where do you engage to make a lasting change? 
I can I can chip in there if you want. So uh, that is the most common thing that I've seen. You know, like many of us um, are unaware of how to bring up things, but we're uh, we we are aware that this is our time. We feel it in our belly. We want to actually our like to take off our mask and come out with our Latinidad and be able to be ourselves. So my. Um, because of who we are, because you need three Latinos in a corporate environment to feel comfortable to speak up. Uh, you need two women to feel comfortable to speak up. You need three Latinos. It's imperative actually to make sure that you're equipped with data so that it is actually building a business case with your organizations. We don't bark, we don't bite. So we're never gonna come and complain to HR or you know, like to the CEO or anything like that. Our nature is actually to work hard and, co or, and be quiet. And if we wanna bring it up, which is actually what we need to do, no more callerito te ves mas bonito, is bringing it up, is bringing it up with value. So how do you actually learn how to self-promote? How do you actually self-advocate uh, for yourself? Is to make sure that you bring others with you through value. So we created a toolkit for employees, uh, particularly mid-level employees on how to talk to your marketing department, how to talk to your HR department, presentations ready to go 10, 20, 30 minutes about data. Just making sure people understand not only how, what a big opportunity Latino, you know, the Latino market is, but also who we are. What are our values? How do you actually can talk to us as if you're your peer? How do you actually can connect with us uh, if you're an ally so that you can bring it us bring bring it up in a context that actually allows us to have the many decades and centuries of training that we haven't had about you know like being able to have that promotion you know like advocacy and promotion self promotion that we have um, but the most important piece is to do something it is to actually take action be part of your employee resource groups be part of a familia whatever company you are be part of someone and take the resources that are available for you so that you can actually equip yourself get energized get organized and get mobilized Oh, thank you so much, Claudia. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. Um, Dr. Cortez, Mike, Claudia, you are you are a blessing to our, our your respective organizations. Mike, it was a blessing to meet and work with you and, and now working with Claudia and, and meeting recently Dr. Cortez. So uh, team, every all audience members out there, the, the information to get involved is in the about tab. It's also pinned links. And if you didn't get that, uh, the 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 direct access to to all our panelists is available. Uh, their their LinkedIn profiles. If you want, if you want to activate from a leadership perspective, if you're coming in from a, if you're an organizational leader or want to make a change, uh, a, a lot of what we said is not groundbreaking, uh, and a lot of what we're, we're what, what what has been said is groundbreaking. If you're not hearing what you want to, what 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 you think is a better idea you know we're all about right now being part of the progress of change so if you have new ideas please share them and 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 mobilize within your own organization and i i challenge all ibmers join us and be part of your brg once once a year that's a, at least once a year if you have you're not part of a one single brg i i challenge be part of at least one brg one active uh, event for 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 at least one one time a year minimum. Um, with that said, also segue to Hispanic Heritage Month. Please look out for the Hispanic Gateway uh, for IBM events going on, and then anything else in between. Uh, with all the resources with the DNI Gateway, that information will also be provided. I'm sorry, we're a couple minutes uh, over time. Uh, again, thank you for making this part of your day. Uh, this is the last and final webinar uh, that we have planned, but look out for more information as we uh, accelerate any other new opportunities with We Are All Human and Dr. Cortez. And, and Mike, thank you again, team. Uh, everyone have a great afternoon or great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Adelante. Bye. Adelante. Thank Bye, you, everybody. Everyone.